all, all my students follow you. I'm glad to hear that, man. That's nice to hear. Well, Nick, it, it's funny. You know, you just have a very straightforward approach yeah. <laughs> that I think people like. When people follow uh -huh. online instruction, right. they want to get better. They do. They don't want fluff. No. They don't want fluff. I mean, no, that's the whole thing. People have been going out. They've been taking lessons. Uh -huh. You know, some get better, some don't. And sometimes it just takes very straightforward, honest approaches yeah. to, you know, for people to understand, look, you're going to get uncomfortable. You're going right. to do it wrong. Right. And, and it's, it, you know, it's not, I'm not here. I'm here to get you better, but I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff for you either. Well, you know, the thing that irks people the most is, when I say that tennis improvement takes a long time, it's so gradual, it's so slow that you're not gonna even feel like you're getting better. That's what people don't like to hear. Some people, some people understand it and they put in the hard work, but I think people, especially that like to watch online videos, are looking for the quick solution, the quick fix, the, the five minute forehand transformation guaranteed by <laughs> watching a certain video, you know? <laughs> like, this is something that's uh, ridiculous because if you want to learn a specific stroke, it takes a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of reps. And it takes a tremendous amount of time, most importantly. So you're going to have to have commitment. You're going to have to be patient and diligent in order to improve any shot. And people don't want to hear that. Some people, I'm not going to like um, generalize, but some people, when they hear that they have to work a lot, then they, it's kind of like a thing that makes them feel uncomfortable about it and then they don't want to do it. So. I don't really like talking that way because I like talking step by step, like gradual goal setting. So even on a specific shot that's not working, I like to solve one technical problem at a time. Right. So that, that's a good way to look at it. Don't look to like hit the forehand like uh, a Division One college player and have that be your goal because that, number one, might never happen. Probably was not, never going to happen. And it's going to take a tremendous amount of time. So just work on one technical element at a time. Maybe you are changing your grip. Maybe you're working on your take back. Maybe you don't have enough rotation on your forehand. Maybe your contact point is wobbly. Maybe your finish is poor. And whatever it may be, you take one technical element at a time, you fix it, you work really hard on it, and then you move on to the next one. So, That's so, a good approach. So do you ever, so when someone comes and they pay their hourly rate, they take a lesson from you, yeah. you work on it, I know the feedback that I got from my last lesson. They're like, wow, Robert, I can definitely see the improvement yeah. from, from when Nick gave you some advice here. And, but then in the meantime, what are things that, that I can do to reinforce the information that you gave me? Do I need to go out and find a practice partner? Yeah. Should I find a wall? Should I, should I invest in a ball machine? Yeah, that's a great question. So let's just take our lesson, for example. We worked on adjusting uh, the loading position on the forehand, right. for example. And let's say you went out and played a match that afternoon. You, there's no way you would be hitting the forehand like we practiced that morning. Right. Because you haven't had enough repetitions yet with the new thing that you're doing for it to be available for you in a match. Because you're not going to be thinking about technique in a match. You're just going to play. So the only way for your body to memorize these movements is by doing a tremendous amount of repetition. So even though we had some good success right off the bat, which is a good sign, it's not like fixed by any means. Right. Now you gotta go out and, um, and practice as much as you can, whether it be ball machine, the wall, um, you know, having your coach feed you balls or, or rallying or even playing points. Then you have to do that a lot so the body can remember it. And then I've seen it many times, it really works. People don't realize it works, but if you practice, if you put in the reps, and if you keep repeating a movement, eventually it's gonna be automatic. You're not gonna to have to think about it. You're just going to be able to call it off in a match without any conscious thought. Yeah. And that's how it works, but it takes a lot of work. You know, you can't just take a lesson and then the coach, you know, fixes something, you think, oh, it's done now, the coach <laughs> has fixed everything, now I can go back to just playing tennis. No, nothing has been fixed. You just gotta, look into what's possible on your forehand now you got to really get a ton of reps in okay you know yeah well after the lesson i went out with my practice partner and in a great drill that we did yeah. is he just fed me kind of that no pace ball yeah. into different areas of you know the uh, mid court yeah and and uh you know 
I practiced hitting it to one corner, and you know we'd play out the point. You That's know, great, seeing man. if I see, seeing if I could, uh, you know, have take advantage of that of that mid court uh, attack ball. No, that's great. And a lot yeah. of times, playing points without keeping score allows you to like work a little bit more on your technique. You know, no and score because yeah, because yeah. when you when you play a real match and the score is there, you're naturally going to want to win the point. Right. And you're going to do your best game to win that point. And that best game might not be the new game that you just learned. Right. Whereas if you're playing points and not keeping score, you don't care if you lose a point, and you're more willing to try to work on the technique that you just learned, wherever, whatever it may be. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, I, li I like that game. I mean, obviously, at tennis, we're competitive. Most of, of us are very competitive. Of course. But I like, I like not putting any points on the board to start, you know, so you don't feel that pressure uh, of maybe even reinforcing a technique that's wrong because you want to win the point. Well, that's the thing. You know, I've, I've talked about this before where I've had juniors, high level juniors, and we work during the week. And then, of course, on the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, there are tournaments, right? And we would train and they would be playing really well. They're doing great things with their technique, improving and all that. And then they go off to the tournament and play a bunch of matches, you know, they play two, three, four matches. They come back Monday to the practice court and they're playing worse. <laughs> it's very common because when they go to the tournament, they don't play the game that they just learned, they played their automatic game. Right. The game that gets called off without any conscious thought. And that might not, not necessarily be the correct game. There might be some poor technique in that. Because what happens is when you learn a new technique, let's take the serve for example. Let's give a super extreme example of somebody that serves with a forehand grip, okay? Right. And now you're working the whole week of serving with a continental grip and because you have muscle memory in your wrist your wrist is not going to be in the correct position and everything is going to go towards the left if you're right-handed you're going to slice all your serves and you're going to commit a tremendous amount of double faults so if you go to a tournament that weekend and you want to win a match you're not going to do that serve right you know you're going to do the serve that's going to go in and that's going to be the wrong technique it's going to be the old forehand grip serve where you're guaranteed to, that the ball is going to go into the court and the rally is going to get started. That's an extreme simple example of why players use the game that they think can give them the best chance of winning in a match that might not necessarily be the correct technique because it takes time for the body to get comfortable with a new technique, for the body to memorize the technique so that it's accessible in a match. It takes a lot of reps. So, so if you have a student that comes to you and, 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 we're, and you and I are in the middle of adjusting their, their yeah. grip, say from a hybrid or a forehand to, to a continental, say they're in the middle of a USTA season. I mean, yes. what, I mean should we tell them to, to, take, to, to take the time off? See, this is like super tricky and it's a great question. And what I tell my students is the following, like I don't want them to not play any tournaments because some kids really thrive on playing tournaments. They love going out on the weekends and playing tournaments. And I don't want to deprive them from that. So I will tell them, you go play a tournament, but don't really overly focus on uh, technique when you play because that's a recipe for disaster. Okay. When you think about technique too much when you play a match, you're going to, you're going to lose, guaranteed. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. There's just not enough time in a match for you to be thinking about technique. And you're going to start losing. And now you, you're going to lose confidence in your game. And this is going to have very negative effects. So let's take another extreme example. Let's say somebody doesn't know how to hit a kick serve, OK? Right. And has a flat like, dink or has a slice serve as a second serve. And during the week, you're working on developing kick. And it's working fine, but it's not quite there yet. There's a lot of mistakes there still. And now this person goes off to a tournament, and now if you tell them to do your kick serve that's not there yet in a tournament, they're going to double fault way more than normal, maybe 20 times in a match. And now they're going to lose that match. They're going to lose confidence in themselves. They're maybe going to start doubting their tennis skills, and this can have a very negative effect on their performance. So I tell them, listen, you don't worry about the kick serve in a match yet when it's not quite match ready yet. You do your normal game in a match, and you come back on Monday or Tuesday or whatever, and then we continue to work until this new technique that we're learning is automatic and can be called off without conscious thought. Or there are some scenarios where if a player has played a tremendous amount of tournaments and has a decent ranking, I 
will sometimes say, man, maybe you lay off of tournaments for a month or two okay. and just really work on technique and then you jump back into tournaments. Because tournaments are important, but uh, building technique is just as important and it's hard to find a balance between these two. I mean, we always want to win, I think, but you know, also I think what, for myself and I know for, for my students, I, I try to say, listen, your level doesn't go like this. Right. I mean, you know, as we're working on stuff, there's there's dips until we're able to, sure. you know, get the technique down. And everybody's different. Everybody yeah. has a different talent level for tennis, yeah. different athleticism. So some people will improve faster than others, right? You know, I'm sure you know uh, juniors who uh, kind of improved all of a sudden. Like yeah. They, they were bad, and then all of a sudden at 14, 15, something clicked, and they became unbelievable. This can happen where... Improvement sometimes can be fast, it sometimes can be very gradual, or sometimes it can be very slow, and then all of a sudden it just depends on the person. But generally speaking, I always say this, improvement in tennis is so slow, so gradual that you can't feel it as a player and you can't even see it as a coach. The only way you can see improvement if you see footage from, let's say, a year ago to now, or um, somebody maybe who hasn't seen that player in a while sees them after a year or two and, and goes, oh, wow this player has gotten a lot better. But if you're with a player on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, the improvement is so slow that you can't really feel it as a player or as a coach. Yeah. That's the thing about tennis that's tough because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work to get better. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you.